Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day, the 26th of May of 2020. Welcome to our service for Raymond Christian Reformed Church. And uh, what a beautiful morning God has given us to come together to worship. And though we do it again uh, via uh, our electronic devices or our TVs or wherever it be, we are gathered with our loved ones and uh, and we're gathered with those um, who are a part of, of the church. And if you're visiting from other places watching this later on, welcome to you as well. I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us as we worship as we look at this text today. Uh, our call to worship, or the, the passage that calls us into worship, is, is from Revelation chapter 15. And John, the Apostle John, sees this vision of these people around the sea of glass. And, and these are the words that they sing or they say to God and it is what calls us to worship because it challenges us as well. The, the words are great and marvelous are your deeds Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways King of the ages. Who will not fear you O Lord and bring glory to your name for you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you. For your righteous acts have been revealed. The Lord's righteous acts, his plan of salvation has been revealed for all to see. And, and as these saints are around the sea praising God, uh, we know that, that Christ was on the throne. Christ is on the throne. And so uh, we, uh, we join with them in our words of praise and our a humbling of our hearts before God. Let's, let's bow our heads in, in worship and prayer. God, we thank you for calling us to this place. We thank you for gathering us as your people. We pray that you would use us uh, in, our, in our individual homes or wherever we're watching this to, to bring you glory. Lord God, take this time uh, to, uh, to instruct us, to to help us to know how to best reflect you and to bear fruit. God, we pray that your name is lifted up, that all may know the name of Jesus Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God's blessing, grace, mercy, and peace are upon you. From God our Father, from Jesus Christ the Son, together with the Holy Spirit. Amen. I trust uh, if you are members of uh, Raymond CRC, then you uh, have gotten the uh, bulletin announcements uh, and are instructed with that. And, and uh, you can see those whom we're praying for and uh, a few other uh, announcements, uh, a note from the deacons, as well as uh, some announcements for uh, a bridal shower for Erica and uh, and, and other things, so take time to read that and, uh, and to be informed. Uh, we're going to, uh, to read, or we're gonna take time to go to God in a time of prayer for, for those special needs that are a part of our community, uh, those who are mourning. Uh, we think of Marge and Florence and, and Mike and Jolene and Kurt, uh, who lost a loved one, Dower Visser, this past week. Uh, we'll remember them and continue to remember Aaron and Heidi Mentor as Heidi's father has passed away. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll remember them. Again, uh, we get to praise God for his answered prayer. Glenn Brower was able to come home after having a triple bypass, open heart surgery. And so uh, we're grateful to God for his, his mercy and grace to Glenn and to Carrie. And we'll continue to pray for them. Let's, uh, let's humble ourselves and go to, before God in a time of prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come before you to, to seek your face, 
to acknowledge that you are the great God above all gods, that you are the great king above all kings. You are the living God who is on a throne and rules over all. You have created all, and you continue to work uh, in, in your creation. You bring about the seasons. You bring about the, the storms that bring rain and, uh, to the, the, the earth. God, we think of this season, this planting season. We ask that you would, uh, that you would indeed help those seeds that are placed in the ground to grow and to produce a harvest, to produce a crop. We, we already uh, anticipate the, your goodness. Whatever it is, Lord, we know that you will supply our needs. And so, God, we pray that, you, that, you, that we would see uh, your goodness in the plants that grow around us. Lord, for the trees that are budding, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, you are the great and holy God. As the song of the redeemed, the, your ways are marvelous. Your, you are just and true. Your righteous acts have been revealed in the world. And so, God, we give you praise. We acknowledge you are God. We are not. We pray that you would use us. Use us in your plan to, to, uh, to point to you, to reflect your glory. The glory of the one and only who you are God. Thank you for calling us to be your own through Jesus Christ. Father, we come before you confessing our sins before you. In this week, we have had thoughts that were not pleasing to you. We have had actions that we have done that, that did not um, display our light and being the salt as Jesus calls us to. And so, God, we pray that you would forgive us as we confess those before you. Lord, help us to turn as we, as we repent, as re, what, as re, that's what repent means, to turn, to turn away 180 degrees from our sin and turn to you. And so, God, we pray that you would give us the grace, give us the, the, the strength in Jesus to turn, to turn to you, to run to you as you run to us. God, we pray that you would receive our confessions are and and lord foster that repentance within us god we give you praise and thanks for the mercy and grace that you have bestowed upon us that we are a part of something uh, we are a part of a church something so much greater than just our individual selves lord i pray that as this church and the churches around the world as they continue to minister in, in various ways, we pray that you would help that light to shine brightly, that the name of Jesus would be lifted up. God, we pray that you would uh, receive our, our prayers of thanks for, uh, for Glenn and Carrie Brower as you have blessed Glenn with healing and strength. Lord, we pray that uh, you would continue to walk with him in this journey. Lord, be with Carrie, too, as she stands beside him, and the rest of the family, too. Lord, we are so grateful to you. There's nowhere else for us to bring our prayers of thanks. Lord, we continue to, to ask that you would be with those who are in need. We think of Melvin Olferts and Don Boonstra and Jody Mulholland and Roz Giels, Lila Thielen, Bev Carlson, Sharon Blum, George Parker, Reynold Rulofs, Geneva Grusing. Lord, we, we lift them up to you and we ask that you would continue to give strength, that you would continue to give light to their eyes as they, as they are in a time of need. And, and, and Lord, be with them. Raise us up to come alongside them as well. Be with those who mourn. We think of uh, Aaron and Heidi Mentor as as Heidi's father has passed away in these past couple of weeks, we pray that you would bless that family, that you would show them your grace, that you would comfort them with your arms, that you would 
give them the peace that passes understanding. And two, with the Visser family and Marge and, and Florence and, and, uh, and, 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 and Mike and Jolene and Kurt as they, they mourn the, the loss of this loved one, Lord, we, we pray that you would comfort them too. We thank you for the many years that you gave Doward uh, in faith in this community, in this church, Lord. We ask that you would be with the family as they, as they, um, as they in this difficult time um, lay a body in the ground. Help them to, to have eyes to see beyond that grave, to, uh, to a, a sure and certain faith that says, uh, that says as sure as Jesus, as sure as you ra- were raised and, and came to life out of the tomb, so will these bodies, who are, so will those who are in faith be raised to new life in you. And God, we pray that you would help us to live in that, in that hope, that certain hope. We pray for those who are in uh, nursing homes and who are shut in, who aren't able to get out. We pray that you would watch over them. Lord, help us to, to make connections by, by the means you have blessed us with, by, by uh, telephones and, and electronic means, through the internet. God, help us to stay connected as a church as we walk in the community and as we say hello to our neighbors. And Lord, we pray that you would, that you would bless uh, those connections. Help us to know, God, that, uh, that we are loved by our neighbors, by our uh, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and Lord, in that, an extension of your love, God. Father, we pray as we continue to worship, not only in this service, but also worshiping you by, by giving out of what you've given to us. We pray that you are uh, honored and glorified in that. Lord, bless us, uh, or, or we praise you because you have blessed us with things to, or with, with the means to give to you. And so God, receive the, the fruits of our labors and the bless, uh, from out of the blessing that you've given to us. God, as we turn to your word and as we listen to it and as we study it this morning, we pray that you would open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, and till our hearts to be receptive for your word. Father, we pray this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. This morning, we are going to continue on our time. Um, we, last week, we started to talk about what it means to abide in Jesus as he is the vine and we are the branches and uh, what it means to bear fruit. And, and eventually, we're going to look at the, the fruit of the Spirit that will come from Galatians 5. But, um, but as we... As we continue to work up to that, um, we're, we're going to look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 through 21. And uh, I, I encourage you, if you have your Bibles at home, to get them out to, to follow along and, uh, and, then, um, and, and do that with your families and do that with all of us uh, as we hear these words. And this is God's word for us this morning. Since then we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade men. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it's also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us, so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. 
And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. May it be so. Last week, as an introduction to Uh, introduction into the understanding of what it means to abide in Christ and bear fruit, we focus primarily on this internal change that God fosters in Christians. Because of Jesus Christ, you and I, who claim Jesus Christ, mark a definitive change in the trajectory of our lives. When a life is changed in Jesus Christ, the the goal of that individual life is no longer focused on propagating or, or spreading this darkened, godless desires that naturally and and continually they they naturally and continually lust after. That individual life instead is focused on living in such a way as to show themselves in Christ. That they're being made to look like God in true righteousness and holiness. Well, the trajectory of such a changed life turns from devotion to self to devotion to God. Again, I'm using, uh, as we go through this series, I'm using Jerry Bridges' book, The The Fruitful Life, and he says devotion to God is composed of three essential elements. So imagine with me for a moment if we had a three-legged stool. Maybe we can put our fingers together and imagine a three-legged stool. To have a stool... To have that stool solidly bear weight, the stool needs all three legs. If you take one of them away, it will not work well. You'll have to balance, and this angle of the seat will be incorrect, and and it won't bear as much weight. It won't be that, that solid foundation. And that's what's needed, right? All three legs are needed to have a solid foundation upon which to sit. This morning, we are going to focus on a person's devotion to God. And from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we are going to see a picture of Paul's devotion to God. And kind of the fruit that came out of that was was Paul saying we we are ambassadors of Jesus. So what is it that that Paul uh, what is it that Paul had that foundation? What foundation did Paul stand upon as he says to to his fellow brothers and sisters that that they are ambassadors for Jesus? Well, we're going to focus on that devotion to God, we're going to see three parts that form this foundation. And and while we see those that form the foundation for the devotion to God, 
those three parts are also interconnected, we have to understand. So what are the three elements which form the foundation for devotion to God? They are one, the fear of the Lord, or the fear of God. Number two, the love of God. And number three, the desire for God. Now, when speaking of a person's devotion to God, Bridges says this, quote, A God-centered lifestyle cannot be developed and maintained apart from a solid foundation of devotion to God. Only a strong personal relationship with the living God can keep such a commitment from becoming oppressive and legalistic. He points us to John. He says, John writes that God's commands are not burdensome. 1 John 5, 3. A godly life is not wearisome. But this is, a true, but this is true only because a godly person is first of all devoted to God. This devotion is the only motivation for Christian behavior that is pleasing to God. In other words, bearing the fruit that pleases God begins with a life solidly grounded in, a, in devotion to God. God must be the center, right? All aspects of life must center on God. Bridges says the most ordinary duties are done with the eye on God's glory. The everyday stuff of life must be done with an eye on God's glory. Everything must be done to God's glory. This is what Paul is speaking of are speaking to in our passage today. Right? In, the, in the most ordinary things of life, in all the areas of life, Christians are ambassadors for Christ in the work of reconciliation. Well, God, Paul says, is reconciling or he's making his relationship right, making the relationship right. God is reconciling Making, his, making right his relationship with the world through Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus Christ's obedience, right, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, which defeated sin, God is, include, God is reconciling the world. He's making his relationship with the world right, which includes individuals like you and me. God then is including his people in that work of reconciliation, in that work of making that relationship right. So as God's people live, we point people to Jesus in all aspects of our lives. And to do that, which God has called Christians to do, we must, we must be devoted to God. We must have God at the center of everything. And so as Paul, as Paul expresses or as Paul uh, talks about being ambassadors for Jesus, as Paul talks about that and, and, and that is his, his, the fruit that is coming, he's calling for the, that fruit to come out of the Christian life, then Paul shows the foundation upon which uh, he is devoted to God. He, he shows his foundation. And he, he does that in verses 11 through 15. Paul shows the three elements, the three legs that form the foundation for a life devoted to God. In verse 11, 
Paul says, since then we know what it is to fear the Lord or to fear the Lord, we try to persuade men. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it's also plain to your conscience. Paul says, since we know what it is to fear the Lord. There's two, according to Jerry Bridges, there's two distinct ways to understand this concept of fear of the Lord. Now, we find it uh, more often in in the Old Testament, talking about the fear of the Lord. Uh, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, we hear hear from Proverbs. And, And we hear a lot about the fear of the Lord from the Old Testament, but it's just as important in the New Testament, and it's just as important in our day to have that concept of the fear of the Lord. He And Bridges says there's two ways to understand that. Two uses of the term fear of God. That is, uh, he says, one of anxious dread. And then there is that of veneration, reverence, and awe. So anxious dread, veneration, reverence, and awe. So when Paul here in, uh, in verse 11, when Paul uses that term uh, fear of the Lord, when Paul says, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others, he is speaking about the anxious dread side of the fear of the Lord. Well, how do we know this? Because because Paul is referring back. He says, since then, or therefore, he's referring back to, to verse 10, where he speaks of everyone standing before the judgment seat of Christ. Everyone will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He says, for, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. If Christ were not a part of the individual life that is being judged, that is standing before the throne being judged, there ought to be severe dread. In Romans 8, or Romans 3.18, Paul speaks of the ungodly by saying, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Everyone who does not know Jesus, or by the gift of faith believe in Jesus, ought to have awful dread of the coming judgment. And let me be clear, let me be perfectly clear about this. If Christ's blood has not and is not covering you today, you should be afraid of what is to come. You should be very afraid of what is to come. Because The judgment of God is coming against sin. And if if Christ's blood has not and is not covering you today, you should be fearful of what is to come. But the fear of the Lord is different in the life of the individual who has been covered by the blood of Jesus. Why? Because the blood of Jesus allows those individuals who have been covered, it allows these individuals to look past the immediate judgment, to see the splendor and glory of the living God on the judgment throne. The blood of Jesus allows the individuals who have been covered to To see God in all his glory. And right, and what comes into view when you when we through the blood of Jesus look at that judgment seed of God, uh, what comes into view is this majestic, holy, glorious, transcendent God. An all-knowing, all-powerful, all-consuming, ever-present God who is completely different than anything in the world. 
This is the God who is worthy of all devotion and worship. This is the other side of the fear of the Lord. This is the veneration. This is the the seeing God for who he is and, and falling before this God in worship and praise and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. This is the God who Job meets in Job 38, verse 2 through uh, 41, verse 34. One of my favorite verses of the, the scriptures is, is where, where Job meets with God. And, 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 and in Job 38, we, we hear the words, Who is this that darkens my door with words without wisdom? I will answer you. Stand up and I will answer you. And so here we go. Here God takes Job on all of this. This shows him his splendor and all of creation and, and his might and his power. And, and this is the God, this, this majestic, holy, glorious, transcendent, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-consuming, ever-present God who is completely different than anything of this world. That is the God who Job meets. And Job falls at his feet, falls and proclaims, proclaims God's goodness. Proclaims that he is, he is but something very, Job is but something very small. Bridges writes, it's, quote, it's impossible to be devoted to God if one's heart is not filled with the fear of God. It is this profound sense of veneration, this worship and honor, reverence and awe that draws forth from our hearts the worship and adoration that characterizes the devotion to God. The reverent, godly Christian sees God in his transcendent glory, majesty, and holiness. First and above everything else. We are again reminded of that song of the redeemed in Revelation chapter 15. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways, King of the ages. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you are holy, and all nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. It is in the righteous acts of God revealed in which we find that next leg of devotion to God, right? First, it's seeing the majestic, holy, transcendent, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-consuming, ever-present God for who he is, seeing us for who we are and, and understanding that that God will judge sin and, 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 and it's, it's having this fear of the Lord both in worship and for those who don't know Jesus not covered by his blood fearful of the judgment to come. That's the first leg, the fear of God. The second leg then talks about what God has done. And, in, and Paul says this in verse uh, 14. He says, for, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. In verse 18, he says it again. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Fearing God for who he is and the judgments upon sin pushes God-fearing Christians to face what God has done to save those he loves. Bridges writes, only the God-fearing Christian can truly appreciate the love of God. He or she sees the infinite gulf between the holy God and the sinful creature and the love that bridged that gulf through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
The truly godly person never forgets that he or she was at one time an object of God's holy and just wrath. They never forget that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, and they feel, along with Paul, that they are the worst. But then as they look to the cross, they see Jesus was the atoning sacrifice for them as individuals. The majestic, holy, glorious, transcendent God, the all-knowing, all-powerful, all-consuming, ever-present God, who is completely different than anything of this world, sent His Son, Jesus Christ, that one that Paul talks about in verse 14, that one to die, that those for whom He once died might forever live. You see, God, that, ma- that majestic, holy, tra- glorious, transcendent God, God in Christ's obedient death forgave our sin and reconciled us. He made us right with him. That, brothers and sisters, is, is the love of God that mu- we must grasp onto. However, there's something more about God's love we must understand. As we are truly made new creations because of Jesus Christ, that means we can't we can't turn back. Once the blood of Jesus has covered you, you can't it can't be removed. Bridges writes, if God's love for us is to be a solid foundation of devotion, we must realize that his love is entirely of grace. That it rests completely on the work of Jesus Christ and it flows to us through our union with him, end quote. He goes on to say, deep down in our souls, we must get a hold of the wonderful truth that our spiritual failures do not affect God's love for us one iota. That his love for us does not fluctuate according to our experience. We must be gripped by the truth that we are accepted by God and loved by God for the sole reason that we are united to his beloved son. Our circumstances have nothing to do with God's love for us. He loves you in Jesus Christ forever. God sent his son to die for you, to shed his blood for you, to give up his life for you, that you might be forgiven, be covered by that blood, and that blood cannot be taken away from you. COVID-19 cannot take that away from you. Life and death cannot take that away from you. Read Romans 8. For our sake, Paul says in this passage, one another, one of my favorite verses, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21, Paul says, for our sake, right, for our sake, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. So that we might become the righteousness of God. The fear of the Lord compels Paul to persuade others about Jesus. The love of God compels Paul to go to the links of being labeled. Look what he says. He, he, he goes to the links of being labeled beside himself or out of his mind. If people think I'm crazy because I live this life to point people to Jesus, may it be so. Paul is compelled by the fear of God 
Not only understanding that just judgment of sin, but also understanding the the holy and majestic and and glorious God on the throne compels Paul to to persuade others about Jesus. The the love of God compels Paul to, to, to not care what others think, but to to push Jesus. And then if we know the fear of God and we and 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 know what it is to fear God and worship him and we know what it is that God has done for us, his love for us in Jesus Christ, those two things give us a desire for God. Verse 15. Paul says, and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. That fear and reverence for God mixed with the undeserved love of God causes us or causes individuals to be pulled to God. They have a desire for God. Paul says, he, Christ, died for all that those who might live no longer live for themselves, but live for for him who for their sake died and was raised. Bridges says, true godliness engages our affections and awakens within us a desire to enjoy God's presence and fellowship. The modern songwriter asks God, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. All all of God's people will one day see God because we will be in his presence. If we... If we read from the beginning of God's word to the end of God's word. We have to believe God's plan all along was to have his people desire to desire him and to be in his presence. In the cool of the day, God walked in the garden and called to Adam, where are you? Adam said, I was naked, so I hid. God said, who, who told you you were naked? Right? That the fall of sin. God, God desired to have his people, those he loved, those creatures he made, to love him and, 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 and to be in relationship with him. God, God desired to, to have them in his presence. And in and, and, and Revelation, Revelation 21, where, where it says the new heavens and the new earth came down and, and, it, and, and God came in, into the presence. Um, I heard a loud voice in verse 3 of 21. Now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. From the beginning of the end, God wanted people in his presence. He wanted fellowship together. Paul appeals to the church at Corinth to be reconciled to God in Christ, to desire fellowship with God. Paul's life clearly demonstrates a life of devotion to God. In this bit of Paul's letter, we in which he implores Corinthian Christians to be reconciled to God, we see all the pieces of the foundation of a life of devotion. Paul knew what it was to fear God, fear the Lord, the holy God on the throne to be worshipped is also the God who justly judges. Paul Paul knew the love of God because the cross, the love of God, the love of Christ compelled him because Christ gave him, him his whole self so that Paul would have life. And Paul knew the desire for God. Well, our own, your and my, our own spiritual lives are an extension of Paul's life of devotion to God, which, which bore fruit to God's glory. 
Paul writes these words to us. We, we get to study them and we get to, to look at our lives compared to, to the words which Paul uh, sends to the church. And I, and I pray that, that God extends his grace to us as we examine our own lives. As we, as we see where we stand in our devotion to God, what, is, what, what do we really understand about the fear of the Lord? Do we, do we really see God for who he is? And does it cause us to worship? To draw him in, to, our, to make him a part of our everyday life. The God who created and who's majestic and holy and totally other. But he knows you and me. Where do we, where do we stand in our understanding of the love of God? Where do we understand... Where do we stand in our desire for God? As we look at each of these pieces of the foundation of such a devotion, I trust that God will reveal himself to us more and more in the coming days and months and and years. And that that because of this devotion, then we we will examine our fruit and, and we'll be able to see it. We'll be able to to know how we are abiding in Jesus. May we grow in our reverence for God and our understanding for who God is. May we grow in our grasp of of the depth of God's love for us in Jesus. May, May these things stir in us this desire for God's presence in our lives. May we bear fruit, much fruit, as we abide in Jesus. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the way it stirs in us. The way we are able to examine ourselves according to it. Lord, may we find in in our lives a, a devotion that is grounded on a clear understanding of of who you are, and may we fear you with reverence and awe. May we have a clear understanding of of the love that you have for us in Jesus, that we are covered by the blood of Jesus, that our sins have been taken care of, that, that Jesus, or that God the Father, that you made Jesus, who knew no sin to be sin, so that we might become righteousness. God, may we, may we be drawn to you. May we thirst for your presence and hunger for your presence more and more, just as, the, 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 just as David the psalmist writes, as a deer pants for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. May May our souls long after you. Father, may we have a solid foundation of our devotion to you. And out of that devotion, God, we pray that we will bear fruit for your glory. Father, thank you for your word. Cause it to stir in us, to teach us, and to change us according to your likeness. Father, we pray this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Tonight, we're going to uh, gather in a little less formal setting. Uh, we're going to be uh, taking time to, to do some prayer. So if you have prayer requests, uh, feel free to, uh, to email me, to text me. Um, those prayer requests, we'll pray about them tonight. And I know that's short notice, but it, you, you can even... Um, yeah, those ways of communication, you can get a hold of me and I'll include those in the prayer tonight. Um, We're going to, uh, in the evening times, uh, just meditate upon pieces of of First Peter. So we're going to begin looking at First Peter, just the first couple verses. Um, And and so I encourage you to read that ahead of time. 
And as we do that throughout the evening times, and it will be at 5.30, um, as we do that, um, uh, if you have questions as we're going through the book, questions, um, I would love some interaction. Uh, you can read the text and, and send some questions you have, and, and uh, maybe we can answer those together. I know we can't be in, be in each other's company, but but we can do it that way. But 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 2 is what we're going to look at. And I know it's just a couple verses, but that's we'll, what we'll look at tonight. And uh, I pray that it will be beneficial that you'll come back and, and uh, gather together uh, in that way t- this evening. Uh, I, I pray that, uh, that you're being able to connect with others, that, uh, that, you are, um, that God is blessing you, um, and uh, and and uh, if uh, if 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 you'd like me to talk to me, I, I'm free um, working throughout the week, so I'm, I'm making calls too to to certain uh, to around to different individuals. But um, feel free to contact me if you if you need to talk as well. But as you go from this place, as you go from this time. The blessing of God is upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen.